When we care for others, we are first called to develop a practice of self-care. Many of us were not taught or encouraged to do this in our training. After exploring the archetype of Chiron, the wounded healer, we understand that it is through our own healing journey that we develop the maturity, skills, and insights to serve others from a healing place rather than from a wounding place. Often this is the self-initiated part of our learning that can lead us to becoming advanced in our practice as healers and teachers. When you do hospice work and you don't really do your, uh, your own work, you don't know your own story very well, uh, several things can happen. One is, frankly, you can, you can become burned out. Um, and, the, and burnout for me takes def, uh, several different forms. One is where you just simply lose the emotional content of your own story. Uh, and you risk depression, you risk shutting down, you risk uh, your life becoming grays and blacks and losing the colors of your story. Uh, and that happens, um, and I've seen it uh, far too many times. Um, the other version, which is in some ways almost the opposite, is people becoming so emotional and so uh, connected to their own story that they lose, uh, they blur their story with the, the stories around them. Uh, and oftentimes um, getting too wrapped up in uh, stepping into the emotional field of a family. Uh, it's, you know, it's a magical place, a difficult place to, to arrive and really be present for the feelings and the content of what another family is going through. Um, and not have it become your own, uh, and not confuse the two. Uh, you know, it seems to me there's only uh, really two basic ways to do this work. One is to start to get shut down so that when you go into someone's home, you just do it out of a professional, I know how to do this kind of way. Uh, um, but not always really being aware of what, what your own uh, emotional story is and how it's uh, mixing with the, uh, the people before you. Um, or, you can, uh, you can really dive into your own cracked open heart uh, story and uh, learn it well enough so that it does inform how you are with a family, but you don't confuse it with what you're doing. When I work with young nurses who are sometimes overwhelmed by the situations that they meet, um, the demands of the system or uh, the difficulties of working with a particular patient, I think of one uh, young nurse, for example, who would stay with a particular patient and, and when she would leave the patient, she would come home and she would just reflect and reverberate, really. She was like a reverberating chamber, you know, rolling around the suffering of this experience of this particular patient. And she came back into work the next day and she told her supervisor and her supervisor said, you need better boundaries. And what the young nurse understood that to mean is that she should withdraw more from this patient who she really cared for and really loved. And so that's what she did. She gradually withdrew and when the woman died she felt tremendously guilty. If we had taught that young nurse to just listen differently, she would have been able to stay present with the suffering and also stay balanced in herself. One of the models that we use in listening is to teach people how to listen from their heads, their hearts, and their bodies. When we listen from the head, we listen for content, we listen for the story, and we cultivate our wisdom and clarity and discernment. When we listen from the heart, we listen for the emotional flavor, and we cultivate our um, altruism and compassion and love. And when we listen from the body, we um, cultivate our intuition and also our presence. Because you see, the mind and the heart can be swept away into the past or the future, but the body is always here. If it's not, we're in trouble, huh? So when we teach uh, young nurses how to really sense their body, um, how to really feel the sensations of their body, that gives them a much greater access to their emotional life and um, a much greater access to the clarity of their mind. So that three-center check-in we call it, head, heart, and body. If we could teach nurses to uh, learn to listen from those different centers, 
um, they would have a more complete kind of listening, they would be able to stay more balanced in their own uh, selves, and they would be much more available to the people that they serve. What is this life calling out of me? Um, and and the part of that is what's dying in my life that I need to let go of so I can step really fully into being in the experience of each and every day. And so for me there's this wonderful dance about how do I continue to do the work of supporting and enhancing people's deeper storytelling while also embrace the notion that ultimately I need to be prepared to move beyond ego, beyond story, beyond self. And for me, it's the current uh, version of dying practice. Because the truth is, is that when we die, we die to our story, our ego-based way of being in the world, just as we die to the physical body. And as is so often the case, the physical dying might be hard, but for some people, it's the ego death that's really hard. As pioneers in a healthcare environment of increasing pressure and pace, we are asked to be vigilant in how we treat ourselves and our colleagues. In bringing awareness to what can be experienced as the pathology of healthcare, it is up to us to change the culture through our own attitudes and lifestyles. In doing so, we can be leaders for change at a time when people are looking for new models that support sustainability for individuals and organizations.